Ho, 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 back again. So soon. Yes, it's Fan Showdown, episode three. And we're gonna, well, actually, before we get going on that, <laughs> I did a thing yesterday. I made, I made a Twitch channel. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, but uh, I thought it'd be like a cool platform for us to like hang out and chill where you guys can ask me questions or just come talk or just watch me suck at video games. I don't even know. Maybe we'll design fans on it. Who knows what we'll do with it. But if Twitch is something that you do, here's my link. Head on over there, maybe follow me or whatever you do on Twitch, and um, we'll hang out if I figure out how to use it. I should, but you never know. Back to business. This first fan might be something you guys recognize, as I used it in a previous video where I was exploring, you know, 3D print smoothing. So if you're ever wondering why I don't smooth out the prints that I, you know, all the fans here on the Fan Showdown, boom, answer's right there. Or there. It's one of these sides. Either way, there it is. This is the Trinity. It's a three blade, a thick boy fan created by Eric and congrats Eric on making it to another video. You're straight up killing it. Eric said that the main thing that he was focused on when creating this fan was trying to reduce turbulence. But other than just reducing turbulence, he also wants to increase the airspeed of the trailing edge of the blade. And he went about doing this by incorporating an actual airfoil design. Eric also went on to say that he is a manufacturing engineer with seven years experience, and before that he was a design engineer. So those two disciplines combined provide him with exactly a zero years experience when it comes to fan design. His words, not mine. No, I'm just saying what he, what he told me. Well, Eric, what you lack in experience, you make up with a plan. And regardless of how good it is, it's still a plan, which is, which is more than some of the, the fans that have been submitted. Next up, we have the airfoil. Designed by Matt, he didn't really provide much of an inspiration behind the fan design. He did say that it is it has some sweet aerodynamics, and although it's not the sexiest, if it prints well, it should crush the competition. Now, I don't know if that's foreshadowing, but Matt's confidence level in his design is, is off the charts. Also, I, I do find his design intriguing. At first, it just looks like a simple two-fan blade design, but on closer inspection, I noticed that the top side has like this hard edge, kind of like a stealth fighter, whereas the bottom side's a nice, smooth, straight edge. Matt, was there some sort of maths involved in this design or you just YOLO it and just claim victory? Because I respect either one. Now breaking away from the common fan, we, we come to Ennis and his fission fan. Apart from submitting the fan and saying, my name is pronounced Ennis, there's literally no information on the origin stories of this fan design. To make matters worse, I probably f that name up too. So with no origin story, let's, let's build one. It's my belief that Ennis is a huge fan of the channel. And at some point in the past, he watched my 3D printed tower cooling video and was intrigued by the infill that I used. And he thought that that infill would be better served as a fan. So that's what he did. He created a fan that's comprised of two sections of slats that are 180 degrees opposed, and boom, you got a fan. Not gonna lie though, <laughs> these crazy designs, uh, even though they hardly ever work, they're some of the most fun to test. I'm pro I'm sh I assume that you guys think they're the funnest to watch too, and I know funnest is a word because I just said it. And staying outside the box, and then proceeding to light that box on fire, we have Sean and his fan, Bladeless. Now Sean did provide a bit of context to his fan. Firstly, he said he just finished up watching all of the fan showdown videos, which uh, thank you, Sean, much appreciated. And while doing so, he found it interesting that all of the outside the box, you know, ideas and designs always seem to lose a lot of air by just throwing it out to the sides. Now taking from this observation, he set out to take advantage of what he noticed and create a fan that has no blades at all. So what he's got here is a series of concentric circles that build outwards from the center and increase in height. And what he's hoping happens is as the air is thrown outwards by the centrifugal forces, it's gonna be guided down by these circles into the heatsink. Now he doesn't claim that this is going to be the best fan ever created, but he does expect it to do pretty well in the noise test. And he considers that this design will be a win, at least to him, as long as it keeps the PC from thermal throttling. And I, I'm, I agree, if this, if this doesn't throttle, that's a win. So given that, let's start with the bladeless and the noise level testing. The bladeless performed as promised, coming in at 42.5 dBA. The fission came in at 46.8 at a much harsher tone. The three scoop came in at 48.5.
and the airfoil came in at 46.8. And being that it's a two blade design, it had that nice low hum, which I personally prefer over a, a high blade count, high scream. But as Sean predicted, the bladeless performed very well in the noise test, be besting all the other designs. But was it really moving any air at all? There's only one way we can find out. First off, props to Sean. You noticed a, a pattern. You watched a lot of previous videos. You saw some sort of phenomenon. You wanted to take advantage of that, and well, you nailed it. Not only is it incredibly quiet, but as you predicted, the air moves just as you wanted it to. And we can see it proven in the smoke test. It does exactly what you described. But Sean, can you pull off the hat trick? Can you keep the old 7700K from throttling? Let's find out. The airfoil finished with an average temperature of 77.2 at a room temperature of 19.7, giving it a delta of 57.5. The fission finished with an average temperature of 87.3 at a room temperature of 19.9, giving it a delta of 67.4. The three scoop finished with an average temperature of 75.3 at a room temperature of 19.6, giving it a delta of 55.7. And the bladeless finished with an average temperature of 90.8 at a room temperature of 20, giving it a delta of 70.8. And although it was hotter than hell, Sean, it never did throttle. You did it. You didn't win or really come remotely close to winning, but you created a fan based on some observations you made that performed exactly how you wanted it to. And that's worth something, at least to me. But that puts the bladeless in last place, the fission in third place, the airfoil in second place, and the three scoop in first. And not only did the three scoop finish first in this group of fans, Ladies and gentlemen, we got a new leader. Eric, you've been in two videos with the same fan, and now you lead the fan showdown. You're winning. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to uh, take part in the fanshowdown.com, make sure to head over to my Thingiverse account to check out the drawing for the critical dimensions of the fans. And then once you uh, complete your design, send it over to the fanshowdown at gmail.com. I need at least an STL file. And we'll see you in the next video.